So this is a UV-vis spectrophotometer. Um, so it's used to measure the absorbance and transmittance of light through a sample. Uh, so this measures in the ultraviolet and visible region of the spectrum. This will mainly be used by the water students to look at um, organic matter in water samples. Okay, so this can be used for colorimetric testing to work out the concentration of a coloured compound in solution. So you'd compare this about, um, against a set of calibration standards that you can measure the absorbance of. And then you would look at the absorbance of an unknown and compare this with the calibration standard to work out an unknown concentration. It's a commonly used technique, so you'd probably find it in quite a lot of labs. So it's a very versatile and useful piece of equipment to have. So to measure the absorbance in a water sample, you would start by filling a cuvette up with deionized water. This can then be inserted into the cell holder. So this will be your blank measurement which will read as zero absorbance. From that, you'll then measure your samples and work out the difference, and that'll be your absorbance reading for the samples. So when you press zero, a light will scan through the sample and it will measure how much is absorbed by the sample and how much is transmitted using the detector on the other side of the instrument. So you then repeat this with your actual samples and measure the absorbance readings. This is useful in the water quality industry um, to look at organic matter in your water samples because that will absorb um, the light. You can change your wavelength and look um, what light is absorbed at certain wavelengths. Different compounds will absorb at different wavelengths. You'd want to look at how different water treatment processes affect the readings you'd get on this kind of instrument to work out how it affects organic matter or particulates in your sample. This is a segmented flow water analyzer. It's a colorimetric technique, so similar to actually what you might have seen on the UV visible spectrophotometers. It's designed really for if you're measuring large numbers of samples and you're interested in phosphate, ammonium nitrogen, or nitrate or nitrite nitrogen. Advantages of using this sort of system over a colorimetric one, it's mostly automated. This is a sort of, particularly if you're looking at running large amounts of larger projects with larger number of samples, um, it's where this is an ideal piece of equipment. Um, the auto sampler takes about 120 samples. It also has a system if you run the samples um, and they come over range, the concentrations are higher than your standards, it can automatically actually do a dilution. This equipment is actually used for people involved in the water sciences side because things like phosphorus and ammonium in water are very important and actually we run projects looking at how efficiently we can remove those sorts of things from water. It also actually has a use within the soil area because again, phosphorus and nitrogen are actually nutrients, soil nutrients. We have done studies often linked in with sort of the work we do with, with water treatment, um, where people are coming up with novel techniques of removing uh, Things like phosphate. Segmented flow is, you'll find it in universities, you'd often find it in water companies. It's a very standard technique. If you're looking at your sewage treatment work, so your water purification, you're looking at levels of nitrate and ammonium. Um, even for our own sewage treatment works, we have to measure the ammonium concentration before we can discharge water into the environment. This part of the, the instrument actually is where the chemicals are mixed. Each of these tubes is actually fed from a bottle. Um, so when we're running it, each bottle will have a different chemical in it, and there'll be a tube will be fed from each of these bottles. Some of these tubes will actually also feed, um, will be fed by the samples from the auto sample. The reason this part is actually just a, it's a peristaltic pump. So all it's doing is drawing up a very low speed um, chemical, but a very constant rate. You may notice there's a, a clicking noise in the background. It's called a segmented flow because it actually introduces an air bubble into the sample stream. The reason for the air bubble actually is it stops one sample mixing with another sample, so they're separated by an air bubble. That's particularly important if you're not quite sure the type of samples you're running, and you may have a sample that's got a huge amount of phosphorus in it, followed by a sample with very small amounts of phosphorus, and you wouldn't want the two you wouldn't want the first sample to actually affect the second sample. So the, the reason why it's got the air bubbles in is actually so they, these samples are physically separated. Um, 
So you don't get anything like carryover, you don't get interference from a previous sample. So first section is basically is, is pumping the solutions. The second the part of it actually is mixing these together. So there are reaction tubes. The samples come in, they're mixed together. Um, they actually, at some point, they actually disappear down into the um, unit itself. Colorimetric techniques take time for the color to develop. And actually, one way you can increase how quickly the color develops is you can actually heat it up. So in the base of this unit is actually a heating block. So your sample is actually sent downwards into the heating block and it will actually increase the speed that the colors developed. So rather than having to leave something for maybe 20 minutes for the color to develop, it will actually do it within a matter of not quite seconds, but probably only a minute or two. Um, so it speeds the process up. So that's all about sort of just reacting the chemicals together. The, the last section, and I, I can lift the lid up, is actually just a colorimeter. Um, it has a light source, it has a detector, and this is actually where the intensity of the colour is actually measured. One of these units is measuring nitrites, one of these units measures ammonium, one of these units measures phosphate. You can actually measure other things on segmented flow. So some, uh, for instance, you could measure sulphate. The way this would works, it will actually be monitoring the, the colorimeters all the time. At the moment, we're actually only measuring we're only running through water, so it's just a wash solution. So it actually has a blue line, which is actually moving across. This is actually the signal that's being monitored by your detectors. So this is a, actually a, a graph of actually what the machine will physically measure. At the start of the, the, the run, we actually send through a concentrated amount of ammonia. So we actually get two large peaks of color. And this actually basically, all this does is actually wakes the instrument up. The software is looking for a peak. The next peaks are actually, these are sample peaks, and it will actually then measure the concentration by comparing it against the standards. On the MSCs, it, it would tend to be used more on the MSC projects. On the taught courses, we often will talk about analytical techniques um, and we'll show people what's available. Knowing that we have an instrument that can handle hundreds of samples, actually means that you can actually think, actually on my projects I can produce this number of samples and I can analyse them relatively cost effectively.